Hey everybody, John Deere here, and we're gonna cover another segment in our Embroidery Medic series. I actually had one of our viewers send in a design that was specifically digitized to go on the front of a finished baseball hat, and the problem was that they had the uh, double borders going around this M were separating when it was running on the hat, and you could see the hat showing through. So she sent me the file, and I uh, told her I would assess what went wrong with the file, and it was another one of those situations where I looked at the design on screen and I could tell exactly why it was happening and what needed to happen to fix it as well. So before we get into fixing the design, I did want to cover for just a couple minutes a little brief overview of how to digitize or do a layout on a design for a finished baseball hat. You have to remember that when you are digitizing or running a design on a baseball hat, you're no longer running it on, an, on a smooth surface. You actually have a curved surface that that design has to uh, run on and that's where a lot of the registration problems happen. The other issue is when you hoop a finished hat, it's not on a flat frame, it's also in a cap frame which is a curved surface and that hat needs to be held securely in place and even if you do have it securely held in place, you can have movement on the actual cap itself if the design isn't digitized knowing that it's going on a finished hat. Now, I do have a hat right here, and I want to point out that on this hat we have the peak of the hat and we also have the crown of the hat. And when you have the peak and the crown, you are always trying to work your way from the bottom up. You want to uh, digitize your designs if you have tag lines on them so that the tag line is closest to the bottom where you have that uh, peak meet the actual crown. And you want to do any of the embroidered elements first because if you do a large piece of embroidery and then do that tag line last, the design may have moved in the hat and that tag line will actually come out looking like this, you know, one direction or the other, as opposed to being perfectly straight. So besides having a bottom up rule, you also have what's called an inside out rule. And the center seam on this hat, this center seam, is actually what I like to call the Bermuda Triangle of Embroidery. Uh, in the commercial days we would actually lose things in that center seam. You can actually lose the letter I in that center seam. And that's one of the main reasons why I try not to have any vertical fills going on designs that I know might possibly run on a finished baseball hat. Because a vertical fill stitch going on a vertical seam, it'll literally stitch into that ditch and have to come out again, and you lose all kinds of integrity with how it looks. So I want to make sure that I digitize or create my designs so they start from the center seam and move out on either direction. It's called the inside out bottom up rule. And that's how I have to look at a design when I'm actually digitizing it. And I also have to look at those rules when I'm actually going in to edit the design. So I'm gonna do a quick edit on this design and I'll show you all of the flaws that I actually uh, saw within it and what I did to actually make sure that it would run perfectly on a curved surface. Now that I brought the design in on screen, I want to take a quick look at it and just see how it's going to run. So I'm going to use my player and go through the design and I can fast forward a little bit. The first thing that I noticed was I wasn't exactly happy with the direction of the stitches for this fill. If you can see, the fill stitch is running almost completely vertically. It is off on a slight angle, but I would prefer not to see a fill run in this direction on a finished hat because, again, it just doesn't have a tendency uh, to sew out as well as it would from top to bottom on a horizontal. So that's one thing that I would change. The next thing that I saw when I get into the next color is it does all of these little objects, which is fine because these are you know dimensionally behind everything else. I'm not exactly crazy about the underlay choice uh, as far as using a zigzag with a, a center run. I probably would have liked an edge run underlay to promote crisp edges, but this is where the real issue starts. They have this first color going down and they use a zigzag stitch and then after it does the zigzag with a center run, it continues to do a satin stitch. 
Now I would definitely be using an edge run for this border to promote clean edges and then the overlap of this is not going far enough into the next color because I can see when it gets to the last color white it actually does a center run and then it actually does the satin stitch and there's very little space between the two it does the the gray does overlap into the white a little bit but for a finished hat sewing on a curved surface it's not nearly enough in my opinion the other biggest thing that i see is all they have is the center run underlay there's absolutely nothing stopping these two stitches from basically sinking into each other and disappearing. That's why edge run underlays are so important when you have two satin stitches that are in essence following the same direction. We need that break wall in there when it's done. So now that I've assessed the design, I'm going to go in and start to make the necessary changes. And I'll probably start with the fill stitch and I'm gonna change the direction and add some underlay. Now, I will mention one thing before we get started. When I saw this design uh, first come to me, I did get a little bit excited because it was actually in the native EMB format. It actually came in an EMB format, and that usually makes it much easier to edit a design if you have the same format as the software you own because Hatch does read and write EMB. But I was, uh, my, my bubble was quickly burst because once I got into editing this design, I realized that it was actually digitized in Wilcom's commercial platform. It was more than likely done in either E2, E3, or E4. And there is uh, the same file format, the same native file format, but we have to realize that Wilcom's commercial platforms do have more options with regards to properties for the tools. So I'll be, I'll be showing you that a little bit later on with this gray border. What I could have changed very easily, I will need to go in and actually uh, digitize because I, I do have some limitations. So let's take a look at this piece by piece and we'll start breaking it apart. Now the first change I'm going to make is to that fill direction. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to turn off the true view, and once I have turned off the true view, I'm just going to grab that fill, I'm going to select it, it's highlighted now, and then I'm going to go to the reshape tool, and I can see here is my stitch angle. I'm going to grab that, and start moving it, and take it from 83 degrees to zero. And then I'm going to let go. Now that I have a zero degree stitch angle, I can see that my fill changed from being almost uh, vertical to now horizontal. The only problem is my fill is going horizontally and I have these satin stitches that are going vertically. These are directly opposing each other and that means that if they separate then you might see the cap show through. So what I'm going to do to fix that problem is I'm going to use a little bit of underlay. So I'm going to uh, escape from that. I'm going to go to my digitizing tools. I'm going to choose my digitize open shape. Make sure that I choose my red stitch and I I'm going to start down here. Now the reason why, let's just go off of this for a second. I'm going to take off my true view. If I select this object and I look at how it reshapes, I end up having my stop point up at the top left hand corner and my start is down here. And I kind of like the way this runs through because you can see that it starts at the bottom of the fill and it just goes nice and smoothly and it logically finishes right up here and then continues on going. So I'm going to make sure that I start putting my underlay right here because it's going to be closest to the, the actual start. Let's turn back on my true view really quickly, go back to my digitize open shape, make sure I choose a red color, and I'm going to start to put some stitches down right on top of everything. And these are just zigzag stitches going back and forth. And this is going to uh, basically act as a safeguard so that I know that when these uh, areas separate, because they will, they're directly opposing each other, I'm going to actually end up seeing the same color red underneath. This is actually going to you know, pull apart, but I'll see this zigzag, the same color underneath. Otherwise, if it's a black hat that I'm actually sewing on, I would end up seeing a little black line show between these if that satin stitch pulled apart the, um, the red fill stitch because they're going the same direction. So I'll just very, very quickly go in here, 
put in some stitches back and forth. These are in uh, essence, you know, underlay stitches, but they're manual underlay stitches. They are underlay stitches that I'm putting down because to be honest, as smart as the software is, it doesn't really know to account for this change in directly opposing stitch directions. And I'm gonna hit the enter. And now I can see that all of those stitches are on top of everything. It's actually the last object in my sewing order. So I'm going to grab that last object and I'm going to move it up to the very first object and we're going to see that those stitches now disappear. They're at the beginning of the design and now I know that if these areas separate it's not going to have any disastrous results. Now I'm going to fix the next easiest problem next because I, I don't really mind the golf clubs. I can live with those. I could go in and change the underlay to edge runs, but even that doesn't bother me too much. What does bother me, and let me turn this off for a second, I'm going to grab this one right here, and I'm going to actually make this a different color just so that hopefully we'll see it on screen a little bit better, a little more intensity. Uh, you can see that this border that is done at the very end of the design actually has just a center run and what I want to do is I want to go into that I want to go into the objects and I want to make sure that I go to the stitch effects and I'm going to change it from a center run to a edge run and this way I can see now I have an edge run underlay going around the outside and this is going to be acting as my break wall for the design the only other problem that I really can see here is this object right here and it's turned pink now that gray you can see and let's zoom in so we can see it there's not enough underlap right here within this object and that's why you're having separation between those two if I turn my true view on the problem is uh, the person who gave me this file said that they were seeing separation between these two two satin stitches and that was the main problem of the design. So I'm going to have to go in and edit this outline right here. Now the only issue is originally I thought it would be a pretty easy fix. I, I don't necessarily like how clean some of these objects here at the bottom of the N, M on the inside you can see that they they don't look a hundred percent sharp and clean and as a digitizer this would kind of bother me how it has that curved appearance also the fact that they don't necessarily line up from one side to the other uh, across here this is actually something else that I'm not overly impressed with but I don't you know I didn't digitize this so obviously it was it was done by somebody else and I can't fix every mistake but what I thought I'd be able to do is grab this object let's turn the true view off and I have that object and I can see in my stitch outlines that this is actually what I'd like to call a uh, in, in commercially it's called an input C they actually call it a satin stitch outline and in hatch they give you two different options one is a uh, offset that runs across one side and the other one which is a normal runs in the middle the difference is if I start to change these it's going to really start messing around with the original let me just turn this on and I'm going to undo both of these I'm gonna undo here and I'm gonna undo here and that was the original and as I change those properties I have no real control so if I did uh, have this file and I was using the commercial program I could actually control the amount of offset just underneath the area where it's touching the blue but that's not an option here so I'm going to have to redigitize that one section of the design and then resequence it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that object that I changed to blue and let's change it back to that white color so that we can see it on screen and remember I'm going to be changing what is on the inside not what's on the inside of this object but what's on the outside where these two areas are touching but right now I end up seeing a whole bunch on screen and especially when I'm at my 6 to 1 scale which I'm going to be digitizing this app I'm going to be uh, wanting to narrow it down a little bit so I'm just going to grab that one object and I'm going to tell it to hide all of the unselected objects so now I have all of the unselected objects hidden and this actually gives me a little bit of a cleaner picture when I actually want to digitize because I'm going to come in here now 
I'm going to choose my digitize blocks and I'm going to choose a different color let's just choose um, the um, royal blue color and I'm going to start right here and I'm going to put a point down and I'm going to over stitch and try to be fairly consistent I'm going to hold the control key down because that will give me a straight line and let's try to clean this up a little bit better than uh, how it was digitized in the first place but I'm going to, I'm going to do this one here this one here this one all the way over to here and I'm basically exaggerating all of these points and re-digitizing this object and uh, probably making it a little bit better as far as you know being technically perfect is concerned actually let's just go back one I'm gonna hold the control key down give me a straight point make sure that I try to stay consistent with my outlines and I'll come on the uh, inside here let's do that piece let's do this piece and I'm just going to continue to go all the way around and what I'm doing now is I'm actually providing a little bit more overlap as I'm moving forward now this one I'm gonna to have to do manually so I'll come over here I'm gonna do this one give me a nice sharp point here come into that point I'm uh, turning this corner so it'll be consistent coming back over to this point here and then I can hold the control key down again so that it gives me perfect angles perfect 90 degree angles as I'm digitizing this object so do this one and this one was nice and clean so do this one to here this one right to here come all the way over into here come right down into here do this one right over let's backspace again hold the control key down over stitching actually let's go back a couple because I do want to try to fix up that issue right there so let's come here and make this a little bit truer to the artwork we might as well try to improve on the results I'm going to put this point right here and I'll overstitch this one right into there and let's hit the enter and actually first let's turn that into a satin stitch and now let's hit enter so now I can see that I've digitized right over top I basically used the digitized image as a guideline and I'm going to continue to put my points down this one will go all the way across just like that and then I'll use this one again I'm going to overstitch come all the way down into here let's just overstitch that come here use this again as a guideline and then do that piece and then come in and do this tiny little piece right here so what I've done is I've redigitized all of the elements of that object and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these that I just finished I'm going to grab all of them I'm going to move them up in the sewing order so that they are placed right before that I'm going to take that one object that I used as a template and I'm going to actually delete it and then I'm going to take that color that I just did in the blue and I'll turn that one into the same gray color so there is my object that I digitized to replace ones now the only other thing that I want to do to this is look at the underlay I want to make sure that I use not a tatami underlay but again an edge run underlay this way I'll have two edge run underlays that are going to be working within that file now when I turn everything back on let's just come over here and we're gonna grab that object and we're gonna tell it to unhide everything so unhide all and let's escape and let's turn back on the true view there I have my design and it's done and if I look at how much it's overlapping now I can basically see that the overlap is much more extended than it was before that is going to guarantee that there's going to be no separation between those in any way they'll pull in uh, you know they're, they're actually you know stitching well over and it's going to completely cover each other but on a curved surface this is going to give you perfect results every single time 
So I was able to go in and fix up that design. Again, I could come in here and start grabbing all of these objects. And this is where I just probably get a little pickier than most people would. But if I turn my true view off, I don't like the underlay in there. So I'm going to come back in here and let's change that from a zigzag to an edge run. That would make this run a little bit better as well. And while we're at it, we might as well take these two objects as well. Let's keep it a tatami, but let's add an edge run because edge runs always give you cleaner defined edges. And now when I look at how this design sews through, it basically has the exact same sequence as it did before. Let's turn on the true view. But now it does my underlay stitches that is they're going to basically uh, help to avoid any separation because I now have a horizontal fill instead of a vertical fill. Then it does all of those clubs, but now I have the proper underlay. It's doing this border that has a significant amount of overlap. And then it does an edge run with the white stitch finishing around the edge. And now we have a design that, in my opinion, it actually looks better than the original and guaranteed it's going to sew better. Now you can see by making a few changes to that design as far as stitch direction, underlay, and exaggerating the stitches where they met will greatly increase the odds of it running perfectly on a curved surface every single time. So I hope you've enjoyed this Embroidery Medic series and I do have a special invitation for you. I want you to send us your sickly designs via Facebook message at John Deere's Embroidery Legacy and the link to our page is in the description below and don't forget to give it a like. I'm going to try to take a look at as many designs as possible and use them on future episodes. So I'll do my best to get to all of them if I possibly can. Hi everyone, John Deere here and thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends. Also, to become part of the legacy, be sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new weekly video. So join the legacy now. It's no mystery, award-winning embroidery is our history. Mm -hmm.